There's an old television show called A Thousand Ways to Die. If you don't know it, let me give you a quick synopsis. Now, it's characterized as a dark comedy or dark humor type of show. Now, it ran for four seasons from 2008. Now, it details supposedly true stories of how people met their death in the most unorthodox ways. Now, it may have served as entertainment for some, but was reality for others. Sadly, it may be reality for many Kenyan small business owners. You see, we promulgated the Constitution of Kenya in 2010, one of the key pillars of which was devolution. Devolve services to the counties, they said. Give people the mandate over their own lives at the grassroots, they said. Devolution will develop the counties and Mashinani, they said. People don't have to be in the capital, Nairobi, they said. Go do business in the counties, they said. It will be good for you, they said. Well, they lied. Just yesterday, the Gusi Contractors Association urged the governor to pay the monies owed to them, said they're now living in poverty. A company in Mandera County is still owed 27 million shillings by the county government for building a wall at the GK prison there. Now get this, they've been chasing that payment for seven years. Some company directors have since died. I mean, seven years is a long time after all. Now, that's not all. At least 30 contractors and suppliers in Turkana County are demanding 500 million shillings owed to them for services rendered to the county. Meanwhile, some suppliers in Moranga County resorted to street demos to highlight their plight. If you go to Kitui County, 2.4 billion shillings is owed to persons who've done business with the county government. Folks, I could be here all night recounting the exact same tales from each of the 47 counties. These are stories of many Kenyans that they can personally relate to. This is their life. You see, when we report that counties have pending bills of up to 158 billion shillings, I don't want you to just shake your head in disbelief and then move on. I want you to think for a moment that this money is owed to real people, many of them small business persons who probably had to get a bank to finance their LPO once they got the contract, people who have waited seven years for payment, died while waiting, people who borrowed some of the money to meet the requirements for the tender, they borrowed money to purchase materials for the work to be done. People who have other employees who look up to them. Possibly they employed a few more to take on the volume of work from the tender. And what have they been told? Promise after promise, from the previous regime to the present. Each county governor coming in saying, oh, they have to conduct a fresh audit to determine how much they really owe these Kenyans who've already done the work. In fact, you remember June 1st, 2019, when then President Kenyatta ordered all pending bills be settled by the end of that month? Speaking during the Madaraka Day celebrations in Narok that year, he ordered National Treasury to ensure that all payments owed by national government are sorted and urged the same of county governments. Three years later, still nothing. Instead, what are people told? Oh, we are conducting an audit. Oh, we're waiting for the national government to send us money. Oh, controller of budget. All this after goods and services were rendered? Guys, this is unacceptable. And these are people's lives we're playing with. We cannot be that country that has, since Kibaki's administration, been talking big about the SME sector. Oh, it is the key to employment. It is the driver of Kenya's economy. It is the fulcrum of the recovery from COVID-19 pandemic. And yet we don't pay them what we owe them. Oh, uh, buy Kenya, build Kenya, we say. Instead, they have to run street protests, bribe, beg, and do whatever it takes to get paid. Why do we do this to our people?
Now, President Ruto in October last year promised to sort this out once and for all. We understand that they're hiring a transaction advisor on the securitization of the outstanding bills so as to pay the 700 billion they owe. Well and good. My hope is that this will not be a hollow promise as the many others we have seen before. That's my take tonight. Thank you.